Hello, NetLab administrators. This is Rich of the Network Development Group. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up NetLab VE to use the MKS Viewer in VE version 21 or later. Part 1 provided an overview of the feature for end users. I provided a link to that video in the upper right, just in case you missed it. So before we get into the configuration details of MKS, be helpful to understand what MKS is and how it compares to some of the other viewers and display protocols. We're going to focus on BNC and MKS because these are supported by NetLab. However, we are asked from time to time about RDP and PC over IP and why that's aren't supported or considered. So we've include, included that in the chart. Uh, we won't dive too much into the details of that, but feel free to stop the video and uh, investigate that further if you'd like. At the core level, an MKS connection is made by the client browser running NetLab's built-in MKS viewer, connecting to the NetLab server, which is a proxy in this case, and it's running VE21.1.0 or higher. And on the back end, you have an ESX host running VMware 6 or VMware 7. It's important to point out that the VNC viewer has not been removed from NetLab VE version 21. It coexists side by side with the MKS viewer. Which viewer is used by NetLab will depend on the version of ESXi NetLab is connecting to and configuration options within the NetLab admin interface for the ESXi host. Our usage data suggests that most administrators have moved on from ESXi version 5 and are running VMware version 6. However, it's worth noting that the MKS viewer does not work with version 5 of ESX and the VNC viewer will always be used in that case. The MKS viewer is first supported by VMware ESXi version 6. After you upgrade VE to version 21.1 or higher, NetLab will continue to use the VNC viewer to maintain backward compatibility. However, if you'd like to get started with the MKS viewer with your ESX 6 hosts, you'll need to do so by enabling that on the VMware host settings within the NetLab administrator interface. You must do this per host. We'll demonstrate that a little later in the video. Starting with vSphere 7, VMware has removed the VNC protocol from ESXi. So if you're running a NetLab version before 21.1 and attempt to connect to an ESX7 host, the VNC viewer will not work. So don't do that. Starting with version 21.1, however, we will detect a VMware ESX7 host and we will switch to the MKS viewer. Keep in mind, however, at the time of the video, we're not fully supporting ESX7 as we're still finishing up documentation. As you can see, the MKS column has a lot going for it, so let's briefly go over each feature and why that's important. Number one, MKS will allow NetLab VE to support vSphere 7 and beyond. Number two, MKS allows NetLab VE to provide basic VDI functionality without adding VMware Horizon View. Number three, MKS provides out-of-band access. This is a really awesome feature for a remote lab because the virtual machine can be completely sandboxed. This works by exposing the mouse, keyboard, and screen of each virtual machine through an MKS process that runs on the host not the virtual machine. The effective result is essentially an air gap between the virtual machine and outside networks. Display protocols such as RDP and PC over IP have their server processes running on the virtual machine, not the host. The implication of this is that every virtual machine requires a network connection and cannot be fully sandboxed. Number four, NetLab VE provides proxied MKS connections. 
All MKS connections between client and virtual machines are proxied by NetLab BE. Only a single IP address and port needs to be opened at the site firewall. NetLab BE only allows connections to authorize virtual machines via the scheduler. Display connections are terminated at the end of the lab reservation. Number 5. MKS uses an encrypted backend connection. All MKS connections from front to back use SSL. Number 6. MKS does not require the ESXi firewall to be opened. Previously, NetLab's VNC implementation assigned one TCP port for each virtual machine. This required a wide range of ports to be open in the ESXi built-in firewall. MKS, on the other hand, just uses HTTPS on port 443. This port is already open by the ESXi firewall. If you're setting up a new ESXi host running version 6 or later, the step to open the firewall is not required, provided that you are only going to use MKS with the host. Number 7. Pod networking is not required. Because the MKS display process is air-gapped from the virtual machine, the virtual machine does not require a network connection or network configuration. Users can change the network address of a virtual machine or even disable the network interface without disrupting the MKS viewer. Number 8. Unique IP addressing across multiple pods is not required. Since the MKS process is air-gapped, each pod may have the same network addresses as other pods. Unique IP addresses are only required inside the pod itself. Clone pods can use the same address space as other pods. This allows content authors to use any addressing scheme they like in their pod and lab designs without worrying about duplicate addresses across pods. Number 9. The MKS Viewer supports desktop resizing and single-user reservations. This capability allows the virtual machine desktop resolution to change dynamically to fit the available space within the user's browser. This is demonstrated in Part 1. The link to this video is in the upper right. Number 10. We are working with VMware to provide audio and supportive screen readers for the visually impaired. At this time, we are not certain if this can be supported with the current version of VMware's MKS backend. Number 11. UDP to client is not required. This is required by some display protocols, but would present significant challenges for off-campus remote learning. Here are the steps to enable the MKS viewer. Step 1. If you want to use MKS with ESX version 6, you must enable it per host. This step will not be necessary with ESXi 7 host since MKS is the only viewer that will work with ESXi version 7. To enable this setting, log in as the NetLab administrator, then select Virtual Machine Infrastructure. From there, select Virtual Machine Host Servers and select the host to enable MKS on. Next, edit the settings for the host. Find the setting for Prefer MKS Viewer and make sure it is clicked to enable for ESXi version 6. Once you click this setting, this will take effect for all reservations in the future. Step 2 is to provide sufficient video memory for each virtual machine. The default video memory is typically 4 megabytes, which is not enough to accommodate the range of monitors that users may be using. A 4K monitor requires 32 megabytes of memory, so we recommend this be used as the video memory setting. We have observed that if the video memory is exceeded, the virtual machine may lock up and it will be necessary to power cycle the VM to recover. Remember that virtual machine settings are saved with each snapshot, so after changing the video memory settings, be sure to update your Golden Master snapshot. To avoid configuring each virtual machine, you will want to set this up in the master pod virtual machines before cloning out. If this is not logistically possible at this time, you can continue to use VNC with ESX version 6. The requirement to use MKS applies to ESXi 7 and later. 
In this demonstration, I'm going to increase the amount of video memory on a master VM before cloning out. So logging into vSphere, we'll select Master Virtual Machine, Edit Settings, click on the Virtual Hardware tab, and expand the video card settings. Specify custom settings, and usually the default is 4. We need to increase this to 32, and click OK. Now we've done this with the virtual machine powered off. It's important to take a snapshot at this point and update your golden master. Otherwise, the setting will be lost. Step 3. You can set a resolution hint on the VM, which will be used for multi-user reservations and actual size mode. If you do not provide a hint, VE will default to 1280 by 768. If you clone a virtual machine or a pod, the resolution hint will be copied to cloned virtual machines. So you'll want to make sure that your master VMs have a resolution hint. As mentioned in step 2, you will want to set this up in a master pod virtual machine before cloning out. If this is not logistically possible at this time, you can continue to use VNC with ESXi version 6. The requirement to use MKS applies to ESXi 7 and later. This step is also not required for master virtual machines if you're using pods associated with NDG content and distributed through the course catalog after February of 2021. NDG pod designs after that time will include resolution hints embedded in the pod design as we will explain in step four. The target resolution hint is a virtual machine setting. In this demonstration, I will access a virtual machine, a master virtual machine, through the virtual machine inventory. The target resolution is 1280 by 768 by default. I would like to change this to 1920 by 1024. Click Submit and click OK. Target resolution for this master VM is now changed. Each time we clone this virtual machine, all clones of this master VM will also have a target resolution of 1920 by 1024. Step 4. If you're building custom pods, you can provide target resolution hints within custom pod designs. The directives are pc.x.targetresolution.width and pc.x.targetresolution.height, where x is the PC index. Note the underscore between the words target and resolution. These settings will be applied to virtual machines when they are attached to a pod. In a normal workflow, this occurs when the administrator attaches master VMs to a newly created master pod. Moving forward, NDD, NDG distributed content and pod designs will contain these settings. And this concludes the four steps to using MKS. With the rollout of vSphere 7 support and release of new NDG lab content, some of these steps will become unnecessary. Here are some common problems you may encounter with MKS. If the resize mode is grayed out, the mode is unavailable. MKS is not available in multi-user reservation types such as ILT or team reservations. This may also be caused if MKS is not enabled on an ESXi version 6 host. In this case, the virtual machine will use VNC and resize is disabled. Problem 2. If the virtual machine does not respond to resize events, make sure the operating system supports resize events. Linux desktops running X windows and Windows su support desktop resize. VMware tools must be installed. On Linux, the Open VMware Tools desktop package must be also installed. Problem 3. If the virtual machine locks up, make sure the virtual machine has at least 32 megabytes of video memory as described in Step 2. In this condition, the virtual machine must be rebooted to proceed within the same reservation. This concludes our set of guidance for MKS. With the rollout of vSphere 7 and new NDG lab content, some of these steps will not be necessary. We hope you find this feature useful. If you would like more video content like this, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.